Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. So the outline that we're going to work with in this video includes first, I want to introduce the concept of a flip chip technology because this is really important and at the core of what we are trying to do today. Now, I want to then show you how to create a virtual domain of this within Abacus. And then after that, we'll look at how to actually set up the model to run. And finally, we'll try to analyze the simulation result that we generate from our simulation. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Welcome to CM Videos, a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to any computational problems that you may be having. Okay, the reference publication that we're going to work with is a publication that self and a student of mine published a few years ago, and this is it. So please do find this if you want to learn more about this. So here we are in Abacus. So we're going to start the modeling for this flip chip package. So the first thing we need to do here is to create all the different components. So let's start with the copper heat spreader system. According to the dimension that is given is made up of something that, that is 0.5 minus 2.5 and then 2.5, 2.5. So that's the dimension of the copper heat spreader and it's got a thickness of, of one. So this is fine. Then the next bit we need to do is the silicon. The steam layer has a dimension of 2.5, 2.5. So we'll do and then the thickness of the steam layer we're modeling is 0.12. And then the final one is the silicon chip. So let's call it the chip. And the chip here would have a dimension of 2.5 again. It will have an overall thickness of 0.3. Okay, so this is fine. If you're finding value in what I'm sharing, please do consider clicking the like button and sharing you know this video and if you haven't subscribed if this is the first time of being here please do subscribe and finally i just want to highlight that i've got a cm video inside that group it's a group where i try to tell a little bit more about cm videos about the videos that i make you know behind the scene of cm videos and also where products are available i also share discounts for for people now the only thing that we need to then think about next is the silicon chip so the steam layer is voided so we need to create voids in the steam layer so if we open the steam layer so we need to create the voids and it's got to be a randomly distributed void so what we do first is that we can draw just one circle and dimension this circle so we know that this circle should have a thickness of a radius of 1.8.18 because uh, that's what we're working with the 0.18 millimeter is the dimension of that and there have to be 12 of them so basically what we need to do is to duplicate this table this into many places so we're going to copy so we select this and we'll start from there and then maybe go somewhere else and you do the same copy select that start from there and go somewhere else so we're going to do this 12 times so let's just do that okay so we've created all the circles which represents the voids and we've also added some edge ones and these edge ones because they are being shared between the you know two represent the volume elements so if you create one here you've got to duplicate on the other end so if you create one there you duplicate here so we've got these extra ones but in total the full complete circle is one is 12 of them and that gives us the volume fraction that we're working with of 20 percent so the next thing we need to do is to make sure we trim off all the edges so what we're going to do is that we use the trim option so we click on those and trim off everything that is on the edge so that you can then have a nice extrusion so we'll trim off all those edges so what this would then do is that it would creates extrusion but we can't see it here so you do generate so you can see this now represents our voided steam layer so we can then go back and create instances of all three of them so we select all three and then we now need to translate them into positions in space as we would want them to be so what do we do so we we'll click okay on this translate button what instance we first want to the steam layer and we start from the origin enter and then we'll go as far as up to in the in the z direction 1.0 because we want it to move up so you could see now we've got the steam layer in place so we'll do the same select now the chip okay so it starts from that same position however in the y direction it will now be an addition of the steam layer height the copper heat spreader height and the steam layer height so we get 1.12 enter so we now have a system that looks like that so everything looks 
positionally correct. So if we check it based on instances, they all look right. Now we need to match cut them to form a flip chip package. As we are looking for, retain all of them, select everything. So we've got a, a flip chip package. So just to pause for a moment, this is your question for the day. If you're working in this area of microelectronic devices and heat management associated with them, I want to know what current modeling challenge are you grappling with? You know, the kind of things that I'm modeling here or maybe a different kind of problem. So please let me know in the comment section of this video and I'll consider that and that could be an inspiration for a future video. So thank you for doing that. Now we need to create the materials. So what material are we looking for? So the first of them is the copper heat spreader, which we have. So it's got a density. So that's the density. What of the conductivity? The conductivity is there. And finally, the specific heat, 380. So we've got that done. Now we'll do the same for the next case, which is a steam layer. Okay, so the steam layer. So basically this steam layer is made up of SAC 305, which is a kind of a soda material. So the density of that, so the density and then under the thermal type, the conductivity here. So a small conductivity for this steam layer of 0 0.0578, which is soda material. And then finally the specific heat. So that's the specific heat of the steam layer. Then the final material to talk about is the chip. So the chip is made of a silicon chip. So again, it's got a density of that. The thermal conductivity of, then of that is 0 0.11. And then finally, the specific heat is, so the specific heat is 700. Okay, so we've got all the materials and we create the sections. So the copper heat spreader section. Steam section. So we've got all that done. So we can then go to the assembly module and then do the section assignment. So if we open the flip chip package here, so select that. So the first of them is this one, which is a copper heat spreader. So which will be what we have. Then we can select the next one there, which is a steam layer. So, and that's the steam section. Then finally the one at the top, which would be the, um, the chip section. So we can switch it to the material module so that we can see everything looks perfectly all right now the last next thing we need to do is to match this system so it's recommending 0.25 which is okay however we need because it's a conduction problem the conduction profile is along the z-axis so we need to have more elements so that we can have a clearer this differentiation of the temperature histories across these two systems so what we are going to do here is to select that component there that edge and how many do i want so i probably could maybe try four so i've got four layers and that system and then for the cheap material which is kind of where our interests lie i could have maybe up to six okay so we've got everything all done now what kind of element type are we going to use so i would prefer to use a wedge element type for this and then the last thing is what kind of re element type are we looking at in terms of you know the formulation of the element mathematics so the default is 3D stress. We're not doing a stress analysis. So we then have to go to heat transfer and select the heat transfer. So we want the governing equation for that element to be based on heat transfer rather than stress history. So basically we've meshed the system and then we clearly have nice distribution on the domain. Now the next bit we need to do is to consider. So our step model for this will be, heat. so we can call it conduction step. It will be a heat transfer because that's the kind of study that we are looking at. So we'll carry on. Then the next thing is everything here, the maximum allowable temperature in this system, we can use 300 if we want, because the system will never get to that temperature history, but this is okay. So we just put that number there. Okay, what kind of history outputs are we? So history looking for in this model. So maybe the whole range of thermal analysis associated with the system. So we could extract that. The boundary condition we're clearly looking for is here. So I'm going to call this the temperature at the source, which is on top of the heat ship. So this will be at the top end here. And we want that temperature bit to be 85. So the other bit that is the temperature at the bottom side, which is the heat spreader. So I'm going to call it the temperature in the ambient. So it's again a temperature step based temperature study. 
so and this we want to be 20. okay so we've got our models we can then go ahead and try and submit the job so it's a philip sheet package hit conduction so we submit the job now okay so this is the kind of result that you generate from this simulation so basically what's happening here is that what we see in this picture in this contour plot is so the temperature at the top of the silicon chip which we know is around 85 degrees which is kind of what we see here and at the bottom end we specified around 20 degrees so now the bottom end the top end which is hot will create a conductive heat path from the top onto the end base here so and if, as of course as the system is going you're watching what's happening as the heat starts traveling from there through the domain as it goes all the way to the other side we can vis visualize that more by looking at the heat flux so again the heat starts from there and you start seeing it flowing so once the area of contact increases the heat starts spreading out like you can see here um, due to the heat flux traveling through the material in particular we are interested in what happening exactly in the third axis so which is the axis through which the main conductive heat path is happening as you travel across the material from the top to the base so everything about this model looks like what we would expect so the last thing that we need to also see here is what's happening with the effect of the steam layer because the steam layer has a low thermal conductivity as a result it will show you um, it would create a lot of thermal resistance and so we need to quantify the effect of one the thermal resistance due to the steam layer in the conduction pathway as well as the effect of the voiding on the system and so for us to be able to do this so what we need to do is okay we first select this height remove selected and then switch this to material select that and done and select the base and done so this leaves us solely with the heat flux in the y-axis so this gives us what's going on with the steam layer as the system as the temperature travels across so if we can move to the temperature history so you could see also how the temperature so clearly at the top end here you've got the system showing quite a significant temperature at the top and then at the bottom here you don't see you know the temperature has reduced because the steam layer is obviously creating a lot of thermal resistance to the system so from a temperature of 60 about 64 at the top it reduces to a temperature of you know on the average in the green region of 26 um, or 27 in this domain so this is what we will need to use to make our calculations so in order for these calculations to work so the temperature at the source on this system will be 64 and the temperature at the base here on the ambient on the steam layer will then have to be about 26 or 27 and then we need to also find the average um, heat conduction heat flux in the z-axis of this domain so the heat flux takes a value between um, the red region the top heat flux is about minus 9 and the lower one is about minus 1.4 or something like that so we can take the average heat flux in the system somewhere in the middle here of minus 13 minus 13 so we we'll use that and then we can do some calculations with it so the final thing is just to look at the numbers from that from that simulation so that we can work out what the thermal resistance would be and just looking at the numbers the average you know z axis heat flux on the steam layer alone is minus 13.2 uh, from the model the temperature uh, on the outside is 64 the temperature minimum is 27 the area of the steam layer if you think about this is 2.5 by 2.5 according to the dimension we are using this is the diameter that is given the volume fraction of the void is 0.2 which is 20 percent the number of voids is 12 and then the area of the chip so if you think about what we have here so we are calculating it based on the area of the steam layer minus the number of the area the total number of the voids in the system and then it comes out at five meters squared so using all that we can then use this formula and then work this out so we're getting a thermal resistance of 0.557 so this is a measure of how much thermal resistance we're achieving due to this steam layer on the system so that's all that i wanted to show in this video if you are interested in learning a little bit more about these things or other videos on using of abacus please check the playlist here and then that hopefully would help you to learn some trick and tricks about using abacus or any other video here which is a video that abacus deems you know that you would like to watch thank you for your interest in this channel and i do want to see you in the next video Bye bye